Now again, keep in mind, this is not what was put into the security clearance suspension letter that our client received or that other whistleblowers we have represented received. It's not what went into their revocation letters. So it's only now, like I said, pulling back the curtain that we see that it's behind closed doors, right? So it's within this black box of secrecy and it's really this secret process that has no oversight from the outside, no, generally no oversight from the inspector general, no oversight from Congress. That's an environment that allowed this to flourish because otherwise we never would have known about this had we not seen those backing documents. Because again, the, the proposals themselves didn't reference any of these things that we would consider illegitimate. They just talked about whether someone engaged in violence, whether they broke laws on January 6th, and you know the things that stretched beyond that into personal political views, or again, even feelings about one's own bodily autonomy, all of that was hidden in these documents. And now that we've ripped the mask off the FBI, Again, we're, we are certainly going to push the inspector general to see whether this happened in other cases. And we strongly expect that they will find that it did. So for those who don't work in or around government, it, it may be hard to appreciate how central a security clearance is if you're working in an agency like the FBI. I mean, you can't can't do your job without a clearance, but the criteria for getting and holding a clearance are sometimes muddy. In other words, there's a lot of subjective judgment and it's particularly vulnerable to political interference, right? Because there isn't, you know, character, for example, is is one of the, you know, one of the, the criteria, person of good character. So like, how much do we know, not just about this case, but about all security clearances across the millions of federal employees about how these clearances are awarded? Well, there are criteria that are supposed to be consistent across the board. So there are executive orders, uh, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, uh, you know, puts out guidance on these. Um, it is subjective agency by agency. Several years ago, when I worked on Capitol Hill as an investigator, we did a very in-depth uh, investigation into the Secret Service and how they issued clearances. And, you know, it was clear that there it does change from agency to agency.